Welcome friends and family and those watching on the internet. Our song today is by Todd Dulaney and it's King of Glory. Sit back and appreciate this wonderful piece of worship.
Welcome back. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everyone watching today on the internet and at home. Help them to understand something more about your character, Lord, and your strength and how you work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, interestingly enough, a lot of work has been done at home over the last few months. And one of the things I've noticed is that when you start a job, it's always the last 10% seems to take 90% of the time. And it's always harder, it seems, to finish. Because you get to 90% and you can see all what you've done, and then the last 10% just goes on and on and on and on. And it's sometimes very hard to finish. So our seed scripture today is Philippines 1, 3 to 6. And I'll be reading from the NIV. It says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God's character is about completeness. It's, he's a finisher. He doesn't start something and then stop. You see, imagine for a moment he's looking at me. Pastor Tim, we've gone so far together We've got through 90% of the completeness. It's just we got to that last 10%. And quite honestly, Tim, it's just too much effort. Too much effort to get there. Can you imagine that? Or Jesus walking, doing the miracles, the glory bit, and then we come to the cross. Ah, just a little bit too painful for me. I don't think I want to go there. You see, God's not about half finishing something. In fact, Jesus on the cross said this in John 19. He said, it is finished. He'd finished what he started out to do. He'd finished what the Father had sent the Son to complete. His work was finished. And you see, we are like God in character because he lives in us. He wants us to be finishers. So when we start something, we finish it, we complete it, we bring it to a wholeness. St. Paul, writing to me in the book of 2 Timothy 4, 5 to 7. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of evangelists, Discharge all the duties of your ministry, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. You see, Paul looked at his life as an offering. Everything he did was an offering to God. What sort of offering? An offering that glorified God. It brought glory to God. It highlighted God in whatever he did. That's what glory is. It brings an enhancement to God. He said he'd finished the race. He could see the finish line and he could also see it was near. And all he had to do to cross that line was keep the faith that had already been given to him. You see, if it's given to you, you can't lose it unless you give it away. He just had to do that. Keep that faith and finish the race. So how do you become a finisher in life? Well, you've often heard me say planning. It's amazing how many people never plan anything in life. The only thing they ever plan is their holiday. But actually, it's really good to plan what you do every day, make the most of every day. Some people live extraordinary busy lives because they've planned every moment of the day. 
and they pack it with everything and they seem to achieve an awful lot. Being busy though is not necessarily good. But planning is. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. You see, when you talk to the Lord about what you're planning to do and how you're going to finish something, the Lord can explain to you different ways of doing things. When I was designing this house that I live in, I remember I reached a point where I was planning it and realized it could not possibly work. The dimensions I had to work in would not work. And I just said, Lord, I can't do it, it's over to you. And I committed those plans to him. And within moments, he told me to change an angle on the roof line that made the whole design work. You see, when you commit your plans to him, you're enabling him to step in and show you how to do it to help you. But if you don't plan and you don't ask his help, then it's down to you. And I never would have built this house. Sometimes it's just such an eagerness to start something that we forget to ask God and commit our plans to him. But if we commit our plans to the Father, it's amazing how he can show you things and how he can implement change and how you can manage that change to those plans. Imagine for a moment, I said to you, we're gonna do a bit of diving today. And I took you up on a diving board, really, really, really high one. And I said, I tell you what, I want you to go on to the end, jump, and, and jump off the top. And let's say this diving board's 70 foot high. You would look at me and go, okay, Pastor Tim, I like you, but I'm not stupid and I'm not going to jump off a 70-foot diving board. And you might go and have a look and you might be a bit nervous, a bit wobbly, but no way are you going to jump off that diving board just because I said so. But if Jesus said, jump off that diving board, and you know God wanted you to, then that would change everything because there would be an empowerment because you know what you're doing is right. And when you do right things, there is an empowerment that comes along you, on you which allows you to complete the task. So God calls you to do something. He will empower you to complete it. And the more right things that you do, the stronger that empowerment becomes and the clearer you hear God's voice. The trouble is, negativity, and we live in a very negative world, wrong decisions are made, and it leads, you know, well, the root cause, as we all know, is self-centeredness. It's about me. And the moment you involve God, it's about him. And Colossians 3.23 says this, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Now, I know Paul is talking here to slaves, but it's, he is talking about an attitude, an attitude of work, a work ethic. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Do it for the glory of God. You see, when we glorify God, you will be empowered and you will complete and be a finisher in life. And people love finishers because if you give something, a task or, or something that needs doing to a finisher, you know it will be finished. You don't have to go back and check it. You don't have to find out how it's going. It's finished. The moment you've given it to the person, you have faith in that person to complete it. Some of the things that get in the way of finishing, sometimes I really don't feel like it. I really don't feel like it. I've, you know, it's one of those days. I just don't feel like doing it. The thing is, if you allow your feelings to tell you how to, 
how you feel all the time, you'll never do anything. It's far stronger to tell your feelings how you're feeling. Tell yourself, yeah, it's going to be a good day today. Yeah, I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. Because God is with me and in me. I am an ambassador to Christ. When you start speaking this over your life, the empowerment becomes true. You believe it in your heart and you act out on what you believe. You see, some people believe in horoscopes. Horror and scopes is a horror and it's telling you the future, which is horrible. They say that because Jupiter is in line with Mars, it's going to be a bad day. And because you believe in horoscopes, guess what? You have a bad day. And you make all your decisions based on that. You know, it might well be true. It might be a bad day. But do you know what? When Jesus comes in, his glory turns that bad day into a wonderful day where you overcome. And you'd miss that glory because you believe some little story about Mars and Jupiter being in line. Paul said to finish means endure. And sometimes you just have to endure. You have to carry on, even when you don't want to. It's enduring the task. Working hard, doing it to bring God's glory. And sometimes you need to pray. In fact, you always need to pray during those endurance times, especially in those endurance times. You see, in Hebrews 12, 2, it says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. So he finishes it. It's in the book, in his plan, that completeness comes at the end. He will complete us completely. Mind, body and spirit. All of us, not just one part of us. Okay, I know your body gets renewed at the very end, but it, it is a new body. It still gets renewed. And if you're feeling under pressure during this enduring time, just have a little peep at the back and guess what? You find you've won. You know, I race quite a lot in marathon canoeing and I had the chance one day where I got promoted from a Division 4, which is an eight-mile race, to a Division 3 race. And it was my first Division 3 race. And Division 3 meant going from eight miles to 12 miles. And I remember when I got to eight miles, I passed the eight-mile finishing marker for those that were racing Div 4. And that's normally where I would stop. And I knew that I was too thirds of the way through. Okay, I had 30% to go and I knew that the last 10% was going to cost me dearly in strength, effort and endurance. And at that point, looking at the finishing line of the eight mile marker, I thought, I don't know if I can go on anymore. I don't know if I physically got the strength to finish this. There's still another four miles to go. That's a quarter of what I've, you know, that's a, a, a half of what I've already done. That's just too much. But you know, when I took my eyes off that finishing line and put it onto my finishing line, every stroke was getting me closer to that finishing line. Every boat length was a little bit closer. And as I began to see the finish line approach, the strength to complete the race came. And by the time I got to the finish line, I had just enough for a sprint. And that's how it is. You just have to endure those moments, but keep your eyes on the finisher. And the finisher of our life and the author of our life is the Lord Jesus Christ. When you keep your eyes on him and you keep your eyes on the finishing point, it gives you hope. 
and hope does not disappoint. It strengthens you. It enables you to endure and get through the race. So keep focusing. When you're doing something and it's becoming enduring, just think about the end of it rather than where you are in it. Sure, you may be at that 90% point and you may be entering the 10%, you may be at the 5% to completion, but just look at the finishing of it. It's done, it's finished. There's something very satisfying about completing something. And Jesus gives us that overcoming hope that what he's doing in us is making us complete and whole. It's interesting, I've been looking very much at Christian thinking over the years, especially from the early church, um, and the, they had this belief system about the body, and it was a, at one point in Christian theology, it was all about punishing the body. You know, if we can punish our body because all the senses come through the body and the senses are bad and cause us to have problems and everything else, but if we could somehow punish the body enough, it would enable the mind to be freer and to run with the spirit. But you see, Jesus came in a physical body. He was restricted by his physical body. He didn't go around punishing his body. He didn't try and destroy his body. He actually looked after it and was completely happy in his body. He wasn't concerned about whether he was fat, whether he was too thin, what he looked like. In fact, the Bible says there was no distinguishing things about him. The only distinguishing thing about him, if you like, was the presence of God inside him coming out. And that's what made him attractive and that's what made him beautiful. So 1 Corinthians 9.27 says this, and this is Paul talking, and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. You see, we know we live in a, a negative world. We know that our mind can be gravitate, gravitate if we allow it, to the negative. And you know what? Your body, if you allow it, will, will, will gravitate to the negative as well. It will want to please itself. It will want to take the least amount of effort. It's like water going downhill. It takes the least amount of resistance. That's the path the water takes. Your body will do exactly the same. You see, when you get born again, you have a new spirit. You have a renewed mind that wants to complete the race, wants to bring glory to God. And then that spirit affects the mind and your mind gets renewed by the word of God. The word of God gives you faith and strength. But there's very little spoken about the body. You know, the body can be sick. But actually, we have to renew our bodies too. We have to teach our bodies what is good for them. So no one likes physical exercise, particularly. That's to start with, especially if you're really, really unfit. But if you keep a little bit of physical activity in your life, it keeps your body in check. And God wants you whole. Because if he didn't want you whole, why did Jesus go around healing everybody? He wasn't just healing their minds. He wasn't just healing their spirits. He was healing their physical bodies. God wants you completely whole. Mind, body, and spirit. And we know that many sicknesses come from the mind and manifest in the physical body. And likewise, many physical um, the symptoms in the body can manifest in the mind. I know a man who had a business and basically his business income halved overnight and it caused him to worry. 
and he worried and worried and worried and worried. And eventually, it got to such a point he couldn't bear it anymore. And he just broke down. He actually had a sort of breakdown and has been stuck indoors now for years. Can't move. The business is actually doing quite well now. His wife's taken it on and it's doing really well. But his mindset got so burnt down this track of worry that it's made his body sick and his mind sick. So you have to look at not just the physical symptoms, but you have to look at the mental, system, the mental place. And there's also, Jesus talked an awful lot about um, spiritual suppression and possession. And, you know, Jesus cast out spirits. So there are things that happen in the spirit, there are things that happen in the mind, and there are things that happen in the flesh. And Jesus tackled all of them to make someone complete. When he did a work, it was finished. The person was set free. And he's still doing the same thing today. Thank God he's a finisher. Have you ever had a, a strawberry milkshake? I'm sure many of you have had strawberry shakes from various fast food chains. Have a look at this. These are chemicals that they put in a shake. That's a lot of chemicals, I'm sure you can see now on the screen. But did you know that out of all those chemicals are described by one ingredient in a strawberry shake? And that ingredient is artificial strawberry flavoring and that's what's in it so when you next have a shake think of all those chemicals that's going into your body so that's what i mean about training your body to like good foods because if you've got good food in you you're making your body strong if you're thinking and feeding on good thoughts which the bible says to do you're getting a strong mind if you're feeding your spirit on the word of god you can have a strong spirit. And the combination of all three is a complete person. And a whole person becomes very strong and a finisher. And God wants you to be a finisher. He wants you to look after your mind, look after your spirit, and look after your bodies. He wants completeness. If your body's sick, seek his will and help. We are finishers by nature because we're created in God's image. God is a finisher. We're a finisher. And we're going to finish the race. I remember a long time back when I became a Christian. That's over 30 years ago now. I remember having struggling with smoking. I had tried to stop smoking so, so many times. But those who have ever smoked know it's extremely addictive. And I just did not have the strength to stop, be it character, be it mind, be it spirit. I just couldn't. My body was just too strong at that time. And my mind wasn't renewed enough. But as time went on, and after failure after failure, I finally decided that I really love people. And it was the love for people and that when I was smoking it was going to hurt other people. Suddenly the desire went. And how did I get that love? My eyes were on the author and the finisher of my faith. I kept my eyes on the finishing line. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're enduring, whatever you're trying to get through today, keep your eyes on the finishing line. Keep doing the right thing, because when you do the right thing, you get the empowerment. Sure, there can be suffering along with that, but ultimately, it empowers you to get through it. God wants you to overcome evil with good. You do good, you will be empowered to do it. And more importantly, you will see that finishing line getting closer and closer and closer. And with each step, of, of, of approaching that finishing line, you'll get a greater strength, a greater anointing, a greater understanding of the presence of God and how important he is in every little part of our life. 
Keep your eyes on the finishing line. Endure and win the race. But if you don't know Jesus, you have no finishing line. You have no hope. There is no finish. It's just enduring and suffering and pain and emptiness. But you know, it doesn't have to be like that. You can ask Jesus into your life. And you do this just by asking in prayer. God works through prayer. And just, if you're watching this and you've never asked Jesus in your life, just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you into my life. I believe you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. Today, I make you Lord of my life. And from, from this day forth, I will be with you in heaven. Amen. Now, now, if you've said that prayer, you have a finishing line that you're racing towards. Race that race. Give me, um, go onto our website, have a look at the contact details, and uh, send me an email. I love to see what God's doing with his people. For, you, for those of you who believe, then keep your eyes on the finishing line. Be that finisher. Ask God for help with whatever thing you're struggling. Commit your plans to him. Ask him to help. If it's sickness in your body, if it's how you're feeling, ask him to help you with it, to overcome it. And you overcome with good and you overcome by focusing on him. Have a blessed finishing week. Amen.